believe that Eon would cast a glance at Panacone at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penacony and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penacony Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron, Penacony, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Does that mean he wants to fight us during the Charmony Festival? I'm afraid so. This is weird. Aren't Ark villains usually plotting some dirty conspiracy in the end? But he actually said something like, In all fairness, could it be that he's underestimating us? Well, in my opinion, Sunday is deeply committed to his own philosophy, and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Yeah, you're right. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacony, and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessor's long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight, and they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. The desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an Eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacony's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. Mm-hmm. Before I left, the Destiny Slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true. But, in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death. And 
And I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penicone. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death. Where everyone in Panacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot <clears throat> sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet are stiff. May we meet, meet again, again in reality. reality. After today, Japella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers. More salvation. <laughs> you mean... my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Well, I want to live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's... That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why... We have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human, though it's Definition escapes me. Isn't this the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. The tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day, it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? 
I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The Nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn, won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? They said, Go to hell, you worthless traitors! <laughs> well, I don't know if they really meant it, but... If longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect... tomorrow. warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain. Let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> Have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that what's tying everything together isn't the big events, but rather these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self-annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well... Congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? 
I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for... A better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will cut off Nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure Nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire do I realize that I'm still alive. When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony. A sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other Paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. Biori Scamandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is... different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient swarm disaster? Tazeront, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe, and it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war. The Propagation and the Order. 
Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain Eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum, and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgeroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Penacony. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Holy wubba boo, now this is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Astana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lawful Cloud Knights would be enough. Think it over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are... They're also once-in-a-lifetime treasures. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the Chosen One who harmonizes? The very sounds. <laughs> what do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. In our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order, so I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal... Well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other son if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. <laughs> Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. 
I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world, instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's, it's for, for justice, justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun. Bathed in my light, my people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad, but... Why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is... eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. Yeah, I wonder how many tickets... Hey, that's not what we should be concerned about! Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. Gosh, the atmosphere here is so creepy and unsettling. Even if there's no audience yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. Something feels off. We're in the right place, right? There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. <sighs> you scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the Eons. Within it, naturally, 
the future takes shape. Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the dusk wars, darkness veiled the sky, and chaos consumed the earth. Anna the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. That marked the first day. They gathered nebulae and forged them into picks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys, and the sun rose. Strike the black keys, and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second day. are gathering around the frame. Are they expecting us to enter it? Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Pentagoni's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing expeditions. But now it looks like I'll be back behind bars again. I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Panacone was still a frontier prison. In 2147 AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. It's true God. that Hanunu was a legendary God. hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberation. Thank you for staying here, honorable travelers. However, the three nameless stayed on the planet. The Endeavoring to spread no the tenets of Trailblaze throughout the Frontier Prison. Alas, 
their efforts proved futile. Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, fighting. I hope you like this land of freedom on a scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my order. Learn the essence of freedom and teach your fellow prisoners to fight for their lives. Hey! Why do we have to fight while enjoying the show? For I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your... assistance in its completion. <gasps> Dustin for oblivion. No one can restrain you anymore. You are free! Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war, the Frontier Prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too... literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! These puppets... Where are they guiding us this time? They transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the third and fourth days. Look! Another frame! to fool. This must be the second act. The surroundings are different from before. The stage decorations look a bit tidier now. Behold the ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages, Tree. Grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. Peace never truly graced Land of the Exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate, so please allow me to present it in allegorical form. Hmm.
Welcome to this mansion, dear outsiders. Land of the Exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. The Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event, orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. Because Master shaped you from clay, but forged me from fire, I'm superior to you. My child, you did not serve the The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. The Lamp Moth family endeavored to extend the silver rail left by the Express, only to be eradicated by the remnants of the swarm, leaving nothing in the unforgiving cosmos. Only when Gopher Wood led the family to Land of the Exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages did Panacone earn its new name, the Land of the Dreams. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigators. Uh, you want us to help you? What do you need? I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the Land of the Dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me, don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The Harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. Looks like we've gotta help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit, right? <laughs> In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing?
this puppet isn't responding at all. Did something go wrong? This puppet isn't responding at all. Did something go wrong? I shall sing for my new master, just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. Master! Oh, you will return in due course, and I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward for my loyalty. Master, now that you have gone, I shall wait no longer for my reward. I shall seize what is rightfully mine. Once, I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. My former master has long departed, but why do I still fear the remnants of his creation? Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. Master is no longer here. I must seek a new master and serve them faithfully. Either I shall be my own master, or I shall return to my former master. I shall not submit to a new master under any circumstances. Without a master, who can grant me true freedom? Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. Heed me, one and all. Your former master shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we shall attain true perfection. Cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another. Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Alas, they remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. 
Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the Land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven... beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers. They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody, and the canon of law dictated the form. Thus, all mortals found their unique place within this symphony. That marked the fifth and sixth days. This guy is really into these puppets. Get it now. The last scene is all about singing the praises of the Order. And the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Peniconi, hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. And now, I shall reveal its future to you. a king who shall bear responsibility for the people if the people lack foresight we will make choices on their behalf and bear the responsibility without a king who shall protect the weak and we stand shall support the mighty protect stream forth and stand Dream against the mighty the So it shall continue even after the king's departure.
for we have become kings of all things. kick off a short story and have a fight here just like we did in the previous acts? Why aren't any of these puppets saying anything? Perhaps we'll need to complete the story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? Guess we won't be able to leave until this act is complete. for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final rite. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. Ascending from the infinite spiral step. I traverse towards the future with measured steps. No need to remember me or seek my assistance. For the contours of my mind shall intersect with other experiences. Again? Give me strength! <laughs> Netmarkers activated. Time for a good old counterattack! On the still waters of oblivion. In the hushed expanse of a nocturnal reverie, I leave faint traces behind. No need to remember me, or to recall the essence of dreams. What is mine shall wane, while you shall transcend its delicate nature. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the Harmony and establish an empire based on the Order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event. The Charmony Festival. imbued the world with meaning, perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle.
That marked the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberated in the That concludes everything related to the Order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence, and it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacony Theater, the very core of the Sweet Dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival, and the very place where the future of Penacony shall be determined through conflict. Your unwavering faith in the Trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness, especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that! They would just be toys for the Eon! <sighs> it seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon, or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from Eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, Please, take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? Lance of Blaze! Lance! Forward! The noise is fading! I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. The time has come. Creation will be reborn from the remains of the gods! Zanahan? <laughs> Radiant spirit! Heed my word! Show no mercy! <laughs> 